So what we have here is what our two students came up with. So Marissa and Taylor saw these patients on their clinical rotation here. It's been three and a half weeks so far. They're going to tell you a little bit about what this means and then we'll get into why we're talking about this and why this is so important as their big take home message for this rotation. So we kind of um, went body part by body part and we kind of looked at the common conditions for the knee, the ankle, foot, back, shoulder. Um, and then we had some other ones over here. And these are all of the conditions that patients come in with for, um, that they're referred to by their physicians. And basically our big take home message was that um, regardless of if it's sciatica or low back pain or frozen shoulder or an impingement problem, we're gonna be specializing each patient and we're gonna be finding their individual impairments and um, focusing on those so that way the, the diagnosis doesn't matter as much as how the patient is presenting. So exactly like Marissa said, instead of focusing on the diagnosis of these patients, we are instead focusing on our thought process up here, which is what we have put together throughout the past four weeks to see that the thought process remains the same regardless of diagnosis. So um, instead of focusing on that diagnosis when the patient comes in, we are looking at the body head to toe and seeing kind of how they move as a whole and looking at those impairments and trying to assess what is going on there instead of focusing in on the patient that comes in with a sciatica referral from their doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we would go, um, we would do a functional screening at the beginning of the session, um, then we would find their individual impairments, we would treat those impairments, um, and then we would do a reassessment at the end to make sure everything flows a little bit better, and then we would provide the correct patient education so that way they can continue to work on stuff at home so they don't have to continually come into the clinic. So the functional assessment for us too not only saw, gave us a visual of the um, patient coming in and how they were moving, but the patient was also able to see how they moved beforehand and then to see how they feel afterwards. So kind of pointing out those things that we're seeing and noticing while the patient's moving to then have the patient be able to focus on that, to then see the difference that they see after we get them, after we do the treatment, get all the muscles working in the body that are supposed to efficiently. And then we do the reassessment so that we can see um, if what we did and our techniques worked, as well as the patient can see how those techniques worked and how they're feeling afterwards from that. Yep. So on that point, talk a little bit about, um, so you talk about when we do the, or doing the assessment before and after mm -hmm. the visit, which visits do we do those pre and post assessments? So we did them every single visit. So every time the patient would come in, we would assess them. Um, their lower body and their upper body because you never know what's going to change from visit to visit um, And then we would reassess for every visit as well So it was before treatment after treatment and then after exercises as well to see how each exercises works um, And to see how that changes kind of how the patient's feeling between these between each exercise mm -hmm. So can you talk about so you're saying that what you're gonna do every single visit is do a quick Subjective then you're doing a functional screen mm -hmm. Then you're gonna break their muscles down muscle by muscle to figure out where there's normal facilitation and inhibition You're going to reverse that then you're gonna rescreen them then you're gonna do exercise mm -hmm. Then you're gonna do patient education that sounds like that's gonna take an hour and a half So how long does that take you guys to do with the patient? Uh, tops 20 minutes if that 20 to 30 minutes probably yeah. if you're efficient enough the screening itself takes 60 seconds yeah. Um, you just do various amount of movements like squats, raising your arms up in the air. Um, we did like single leg balancing and stuff like that. And um, yeah. Yeah, it's a perfect Pretty way to easy. develop your hypotheses as you're watching the patient move and kind of focus on what you're seeing and what you may think you may find on the table, mm -hmm. which helps you be able to zoom in on that body part too as you're doing your full body screen to kind of zoom in on the hip, the knee, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way to get more patient um, history as well. Um, a lot of times we'll have patients come in um, first visit and they'll be coming in with shoulder pain but then they'll forget about the knee surgery that they had a few years back. So it's definitely good to continually get that subjective as well. So the other thing I need clarity on as somebody who's hearing about this for the first time is you're telling me that all of these complaints and all of these referred diagnosis you can treat the same and not only are you going to treat all those the same but you're also telling me that patients that are 
young versus old, patients that are active versus sedentary versus athletic versus college athletes. You're gonna treat all of them the same too? So we treat each patient individually, um, each with their specific impairment. So regardless of their age, we provide the correct patient education, um, whether they're a high school athlete, college athlete, or if they're um, in a Medicare patient, um, anything like that, we provide the correct education. Um, and then we find the root cause of the problem, and that's how we treat. Yes, so the thought process remains the same throughout all of them, um, but what we see during that functional screening and what we find on the table is what we individualize for the treatment, what we focus on. Mm -hmm. So we basically uh, facilitate the muscles working on the table, and then when we get them up and moving, we reinforce that facilitation and get those muscles now working through their functional range, which they should be, creating a more efficient um, kinematic matrix for them. Uh, our patients. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> so, excellent job of, of explaining this and how you've heard me say this over and over. It doesn't matter how old they are, what their diagnosis is, what their pain is. If you look at them on the neuromuscular level and you understand human physiology, you understand biomechanics, and you understand how to apply the knowledge that you learned in PT school. You don't need to take more courses. You don't need a dry needle. You don't need a foam roll. You don't need a stretch. You don't need to do any of that stuff because that is not sound thought processes if you are using physiology and critical thinking as your base, which is what these two first year students just knowledge bomb dropped on you. <laughs>